watching Help on Flash videos. I'm Arapa, and today we have got Deeraj from State of BNB joining us in for this chat. Uh, welcome to the to the episode, uh, Deeraj, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks for having me, Arapa. Um, I'm Deeraj. I'm one of the co-founders at State. We are a multi-chain liquid staking protocol. Uh, we are live on six chains, and we are launching on eight soon. So we are one of the very few protocols that have launched on several blockchains have uh, worked with multiple security partners, depending on uh, what secure, what expertise each partner brings in on each ecosystem. Um, and I'm here to talk about, uh, you know, security best practices with you guys. Okay, awesome. And uh, just if I can get into that a little bit, thanks for the context, by the way. Um, there are so many uh, players building on state and ecosystems and how does uh, state Airbnb uh, differentiate itself from the rest of the players around there? The first thing is um, we are the safest platform out there because the approach that we have taken to safety uh, when it comes to liquid staking or staking in general on BNB um, is, is unique. So we'll talk about several elements there. Um, and in terms of the technical differences, we have the largest LP positions on, on state air. And what it means is um, for a lot of the instant liquidity side, we offer the best return for folks. Okay, awesome, that's great to know. Um, all right, so at Halbon, we do believe that we're only as strong as our weakest line of code. So code is uh, everything to us and code security is our topmost priority. So I would love to learn from you a little bit. How do you approach cybersecurity in general and what are the practices you have set in place for this? I view personally cybersecurity as, as a defense layer, right? Especially when we're putting out code that deals with money, um, it's going to hurt if there's an exploit. So right, um, I see cybersecurity is um, as a combination of essentially the defense layer, combination of constant monitoring, um, combination of understanding if something has gone wrong, and a combination of having the toggles or controls to, to stop um, any suspicious activity uh, to a reasonable degree. And um, mm -hmm. at Stater, essentially, we rely on auditors like, like Halburn um, and, and a bunch of uh, other auditors across ecosystems. We have uh, bug bounties put up on Unify, and it's it's a million dollar bug bounty for anyone who can report a crucial bug or critical bug for us. And wow. we have constant ongoing metrics um, through mm -hmm. Forta. We have monitoring dashboards, internal dashboards, external dashboards to give a complete overview on what is happening with our liquid tokens um, across the ecosystems, but certainly for BNB. No, that's very interesting. Security is definitely a spectrum and you have the preventative ex aspect of it ongoing, the detection, the prevention, and of course, like uh, what happens after. And it does seem like you have a lot of that in place. So uh, my next question is, when you partner with players such as, let's say, Forta or Immunify or Halborn, what, is your, what are your top criteria? What do you look for in a security partnership here? The first and foremost is we want the auditor or the consultant to be uh, to have legitimate experience in doing this, and with with Halburn, we have again worked on so many audits. But one thing was that was very clear with Halburn was uh, you guys were very uh, very clear on on being uh, very diligent with your audits. Um, the attention to detail was great, which are a few things that we appreciate in auditors. Right now, the second thing is the familiarity with the blockchain space. Uh, Given the nature of our business, we have products on six or seven blockchains, and we are a liquid staking protocol. So we deal with a lot of staked validator, unstaked from validator, withdraw rewards from validator, unbonding. So there's all sorts of constraints around delegations and proof of stake, uh, right. depending on the chain that we want auditors to be familiar with. And that's that's been a crucial one too. Now, the next part, uh, once we have these two lined up, is to understand you know, how an auditor work, uh, works and not all auditors work the same way. The process is, you know, highly variant. Some have lean teams, some have teams that are there to support you. We, we typically want auditors to be in constant communication with us to tell us if there are any issues and not wait until the audit is finished and, and give a singular PDF, right, with all the issues. So we want to stay on top of this process and communication has been a key component, which is, which is sadly underlooked, but it's been a very crucial component for us in selecting the right kind of auditor. Yeah, absolutely. To us also proactive communication is something that definitely takes a lot of importance in even just to understand where our partners are coming from. Flexibility in this process um, is also something that's underappreciated. And every team operates differently and every 
uh, auditing team also has their own constraints, uh, time zone differences. And so it's very important to actually talk about these things, set general expectations, uh, understand um, understand what a common ground is, and then uh, you know make yourself comfortable with the whole process. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Uh, I mean, that three comes with its own set of unique set of challenges as well, and uh, managing them is quite a task by itself. Um, all right, so with that, I also wanted to ask you a little bit because uh, we had the recently the Anchor BNB exploit and the dev private key was leaked and uh, the smart contract was altered around it, right? Uh, so I kind of wanted to understand this a little bit more from you and also ask you if this is applicable to your platform and how does that act? Yeah, so let me take a step back and, and maybe um, tell folks what had happened for those who are not aware of what happened with the Anchor hack. So um, there's usually you know, a key or a smart contract that controls the upgradability of a contract. And this is generally not a bad practice because you would want a contract upgrades to happen in, in case there are emergencies. Um, but the unfortunate part with Anchor was it was controlled by a single EOA which is essentially not a contract. And uh, what it meant was, you know, well, nobody knows what really happened, but uh, what we know is that the private key was leaked. So the malicious actor essentially upgraded the code, mint, uh, they minted a lot of uh, liquid tokens, and then they dumped it across all the DEXs. Mm -hmm. About 10 to 15 protocols on BNB got affected because of this, which is, and it's massive. Um, an anchor team has has been on top of it. They're trying to you know negotiate and and reimburse, but that's all a, a different story. Now, when mm -hmm. it comes to Stater, we have been in line with our principles. We understand that we are in a business of trust, right? Just like just like Halbun is. Um, so a breach of trust is something that is very very hard for us to um, to essentially go back on. So um, we have from day one. We have always had multi-sigs that were set up in place for code upgradability for internal managing bots, whatever it is. And uh, we have essentially multi-sigs that are external. So mm -hmm. stated, even if we want to, we cannot um, unilaterally make any decisions. So we have to loop in prominent figures in the BNB ecosystem to actually um, make, update, make updates to code. Now, the second thing is we're also uh, very, very close to essentially implementing a time lock uh, for even this external multi-sig. And what it means is even if a proposal is passed to make a code change, now you will have this a day or two days of time gap where that change is not going to be implemented and you can let the community know that this is coming. So yeah. uh, we are essentially taking a step back and understanding uh, what are all the steps, or what are all the security measures that one could take to protect a solution of this sort. And uh, we have implemented 80% of that. And within the next week or so, we'll have implemented the rest of the 20% too. And as I mentioned earlier, we've also had, um, we, we also have like a million dollar bug bounty on Immunify. And uh, we have not had any bugs reported yet. Um, so I'm taking that as a positive sign. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, so in your opinion, having all these security best practices in place, plus having multi-six and time logs definitely goes a step forward in securing the state of BNB platform and users can be a bit more assured in that direction. This has been a great conversation in terms of understanding how diligently you guys have also handled security. So I'll definitely end with uh, this question, probably, that if you could look back and possibly come up with a word of advice, or rather new phrases of advice for builders on staking ecosystems, what would that be? I think generally for any on-chain protocols, um, not just related to staking, I feel we've got to come to terms with the mindset that you know security incidents are part of how this ecosystem grows. Um, so it's very important to understand that we should start approaching this with uh, a mindset of when, but not an if in terms of an exploit. Right, so it's very important for us to have all the final controls to stop the damage as soon as possible, um, curtail movement of funds. Uh, again, balance all of this with decentralization and open and transparent code. Uh, and it is possible, like we can put in a lot of these structures in place um, where community sufficiently trusts that your code is, is, is for 
um, is is a well intended code, and um, they rally behind you. But um, generally, twenty four seven monitoring um, essentially alerts around any suspicious activity. So um, and audits constant um, periodic audits if you're making upgrades to any 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 code um, and making sure that multi-sigs are put in place for everything that's required and preferably externalize the multi-sigs right and work with um, essentially good auditors like Halburn um, to to not just view on-chain code as a as a solo product but understand security as a whole right there could be exploits happening through the DAP site through the UI um, you know it could be uh, essentially security practices that the developer team needs to uh, needs to be aware of on how to protect the keys or their uh, machines using the right set of tools to uh, transfer secrets um, all of these essentially are a holistic system um, and in this ecosystem given that we all have responsibility to take DeFi forward um, it is it is very important that we that that, that we take this job seriously yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we always have maintained that security is not an afterthought, rather a mindset. So you always have to take that front and center, even while designing your coding system. So uh, great to hear that you uh, conquer in our belief system too. Uh, thank you, Dhirish. This has been a great chat. It also is, has been insightful to understand all the security steps you have in place over there. And um, our, to our community, if you guys have any other questions for them, feel free to drop us a line and we'll be getting back to you very soon. Thanks again. Thank you.